What's up guys, Josh here from Keep It Techie and welcome back to the channel. If you like getting your hands on with Linux, learning what's really good and what's not before you install it, you're in the right place. And before we dig in, go down and hit that like button if you enjoy these distro reviews. And if you're new here, go ahead on and subscribe. I post stuff like this all the time. Now today, I'm diving into ASME Linux 13, the Debian edition. And I've been watching how ASME has been evolving. It used to be built on Ubuntu, and this new Debian spin has some interesting promises. Now you guys know I love XFCE, and this has a polished XFCE experience. And you have choice over Snap, Flatpak, System Restores built in, and more. And I'll walk you through what ASME 13 offers. And also I'll cover my take on how well it delivers, and who I think should try it out, or if you should skip it totally. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm at distrowatch.com. This is the ASME page. And I just wanted to quickly cover it right fast. The OS type is Linux, obviously. It's based on Debian stable, as well as Ubuntu. They do have a Ubuntu edition. And then the origin is from India. Just so you guys know, I wanted to give you guys a full background on it. Architecture, x86-64, desktop, XFCE, which is my favorite. The category is a desktop Linux live media that you can download. The status is actively being worked on and the popularity. So it's a lot of people that actually enjoy this dish or they actually like it thus far. But you can get to the link down here. I'll, of course, I'll have these links down in the description of the video. So you guys can just go right to it and download it if you want to try it. But here is the page for ASME Linux that kind of covers everything that's included with this distro. It comes with XFCE version 4.20, Linux kernel version 6.12, and the ISO is a little bit less than two gigs. And that comes with apps like Firefox, Nemo, Genie, etc. And also it's super simple to install. It comes with the Calamoris installer. You guys have probably seen that multiple times on my channel and how simple it is. And then if you want to download it, all you have to do is go down to the bottom. Bottom. this kind of covers everything up here else that's included and if you go down here you can download the iso and like i said it's a little under two gigs or right at two gigs so you can download it right here there's a shot 256 you can verify it. and a couple other things i wanted to tell you guys asme 13 comes with the nala and dev git as improved front ends or helpers around debian apps package manager and like i said it comes with firefox directly from mozilla you got your snap and flat packs which are supported but not forced upon you you can enable disable them via the GUI tool in ASME. Now check this out. The system restore functionality is built in via Cron Shield. It keeps snapshots. You can set up hourly, daily, so that you can revert the system to a prior state. It's super cool. Now that kind of sums up ASME Linux 13 and it's positioning itself as a Debian with polish. Not bloated, but not bare bones either. It tries to blend stability and usability. Now that you know what's under the hood, it's time for the installation port. So let's get to that. All right, so I'm booted into the live ISO. So as you see, you got three options as soon as it comes out. You can try out ASME Linux. You can run it directly from the live ISO and just play around with it. Check it out. And then you can also do the install, which I'm going to go on and install it. And then you also had a restore, which is going now. I'm sorry, the restore, though, allows you to restore from one of your snapshots. So in order to restore from one of your snapshots, I just want you guys to know that. Now, let's go on in, hit next here. Like I said, this is the Calamaris installer. Let's go on, select my location, keyboard layout, my disk settings. I'll give it a little swap. So swap to file. And we can use the XT4, that's fine. And then let's go on and hit next there and create our account. So this is as me. And then let's go on and give it a super strong password. And then also I'm not gonna select login automatically. We're gonna use that same password for the administrator account. That's cool. Let's go on and press next, install. And that's pretty much the installation. And I'll just come back once it's done installing, reboot it and walk you guys through the first setup once you get into the operating system so be back in a sec all right so the install is complete let's go down and just hit the reboot button and i'll come back when it's up all right so we finally logged into the desktop environment and i just wanted to quickly walk you guys through the setup that pops up as soon as you log in so it actually the theme so you can go through each one of these steps i'm gonna go with dark theme you can go through the layout you can use the classic which is a single panel on the left you can go with the modern 
which is a top panel and then a dock at the bottom. So that's super cool. And then you got your windows look. So that just brings up the bottom panel and that's your start menu right there. It looks like windows or you want to go through and do it that way. So it's got the sideboard and then the top one up here. I'm gonna just go with the classic, the Asmi classic and where it just has the board on the left. So super cool. And all your like favorite apps and all that stuff right up in here. And then you can go into your snaps. You can enable snaps. You can enable flat packs. Like I told you guys, you got your driver settings. So you can install NVIDIA drivers, wine compatibility layer. If you need to install Windows applications, Microsoft True Fonts, if you want that set up, you got your Steam client as well. Your browsers, you can turn on other browsers. Like I said, it comes with Mozilla Firefox and I know it's a lot of controversy around Firefox. So you can switch it out. You can put Google Chrome, Edge, which I don't know why you want to use Edge, but Vivaldi, Opera is super cool and Brave. So you got those options there. You got your software right here that you can install GTK3 and then you got your GTK4 software. So you can just turn on any of this default software. And, and like I said, it doesn't come with all the bloat. So that's a good thing. You have to go through and install everything that you want. And it makes it super simple with this ASME settings because all you have to do is toggle things on and off. And so you can get LibreOffice installed right there, Inkscape, you know, whatever you need. Then you got your GTK4 applications. You can go through all of these. You got your gnome snapshot gnome logs gnome console all that good stuff that's there as well as i see this softwave internet radio player that's another terminal emulator which i actually need to check that one out document viewers all that good stuff you can modify your kernel so you can keep the current stable version you can do the debian lts so long term support it kernel which is the stable well-tested lts kernel from debian they have a Zen kernel and you got your Zen kernel down here as well. You can remove kernels that you have on there and all we have is one. So if you add a different kernel, you can remove whichever one you want. Then you got your system recovery or system restore. You can turn on your snapshots right here. So as you can see, boom, that's your snapshots. You can go into more apps. This allow you to install the apps on the system. But let's just roll with that and Go down and type in our pseudo password and it's going to refresh all your package information. So any changes that you made, it'll install those and then update the system as well. So let's go down and let that run right fast. And all you have to do is press any key to exit and you get to go. And we can go down and close that. So that's our settings. And then if you ever want to go back in there, you just have to go into your ASME settings again and this will bring up that settings for you and you can go through and make changes right in there. Now, one other thing I want to show you guys, you got your XFCE settings. So that's how you get to everything there. You can make your changes there, change the appearance and all that stuff that's dealing with XFCE themes, all that good stuff. You can modify or add more themes there. Then just starting down here at the bottom, you got your sound, you got your battery, you got your alerts. So right here, just basically saying you're connected to the internet and then you can mark all those as red. You can change the modifications or your notification settings. Here's your network settings. Then this is that menu I just brought up. Shows you how to pretty much do everything you want on here. So dev get installed, dev get removed. I saw applications right up in there where you can get things installed. So look at that. Jellyfin, OBS Studio, Plex Media Server. So it has all your applications right there that you can just click on them and install. And then you can also do the dev get remove and that will remove whatever application you want there. Now you can also go into your terminal and I like the way the terminal looks, but let's see what all we got on here. So let's go uname dash A, run that right fast. So yeah, 6.12 kernel and let's check out Nyla. So let's go sudo and then Nyla updates for center. This will check for updates on the system, which we already checked. But like I was telling you guys, I really like Nyla. I think I showed you guys this before, but let's go on and run the upgrade and it'll go through and upgrade all your packages that need updates. All right, and while he's updating, let me go down and just check something else. Let's see if we have NeoFetch on the system. And if not, we'll install it. And, oh, it does. So I hit tab, it does have NeoFetch. All right, cool. So this will give you the information on what's actually being used when it comes to the icon. So Telebudgie Dork, you got your Yaru, Blue Dork, your Window Manager theme, ADW GTK3, Dork Small, your font, your Ubuntu, Font, the cursor, breeze, snow, terminal, terminator. So that's terminator. And then that's pretty much it. I just wanted to at least show you guys a little bit what the desktop has. I just go through and look at the start menu. So you open up all your application right over here. You can modify this. 
make it look how you want it to look adjust it if you need to however you need to do it all applications you can search you got your favorites which are pretty much these right here and recently used as well so good to go and then you got your log out up here so you get log out of it shut down may cancel there and you can go into your settings that way as well for xfce and just to show you guys they do have synaptic package manager on here so you can open that up and get applications installed that way you don't have to just use the as me menu over here where you can use dev get install you can open up synaptic Pack package manager as well and right now it's only locked right now because i'm running nyla right now in the background just go and close that though and that's pretty much all i wanted to show you guys okay so let me give you my thoughts let's start off with the strengths and highlights now for one it does have a elegant polishing of xfce this is one of the biggest wins in my book it looks nicer the default vertical panel is a bold and space efficient choice and the theme icon tweaks feel cohesive now the customization options you got four different types you got classic modern windows like or ubuntu and it lets users pick a layout that feels familiar one other thing it has a browser which i really like not having to live in debian esr's browser is a big plus having firefox from mozilla gives you that modern web support and of course there's a lot of controversy around mozilla right now when it comes to firefox but you can install your own browser if you need to at least it comes with some modern web support and also the inclusion of nyla and dev git is a nice touch for smoothing package handling now with cron shield snapshot approach this makes everything very comforting if something breaks or you mess up configurations you can quickly roll back and for users who fear, I broke the system, this gives you a clear safety net. Now, another strength, I really like the choice and control. And that's with any distro, which is why I use Arch Linux for my main system. But I like to have that choice and control and the ability to enable, disable universal package management gives you that flexibility like i said you can turn off snaps you can turn them on you can turn on flat packs you can turn it off however you want to get it set up also users can install alternate kernels from within the asme settings which is super dope now one other strength is because it does impact everything by default resource usage tends to stay lower than in heavier bloated distros and if you want to build up from a solid core this gives you less waste now let's go into some of the weaknesses even though a lot of work is done there are occasionally consistency issues or features that don't feel as mature as in long established distro for example wallpaper switching isn't as intuitive via right click desktop you may need to use the tray app and this is similar to criticisms from earlier as me reviews now one thing that's a trade-off keeping like 20 snapshots so 10 hourly plus 10 daily means you need this space and on smaller ssds or partitions that might become a constraint also snapshot recovery is done via the live iso recovery boot option which is good but not as seamless as in some of the snapshot backup systems now one thing i also didn't like was relying on extra tooling like the asthma settings indicator which are proprietary some of the management tools are part of ASME Extra's layer, not core open source Debian. And if those tools lag or break, some tasks may require manual workarounds. Now, because you have leeway installing alternate kernels or external repos, there's always a risk of mixing something incompatible in Debian. So you as a user should be cautious and test before full deployment. Now, let me let you know who should actually use this. This is a good fit for intermediate users who want stable Debian, but with a more user-friendly front end. People migrating from Windows who like layout options like classic, Windows-like, et cetera, you have all those options to benefit you. And users who also want a safety net. So if you had those snapshots running, then you'll be good at rolling back, but not at the cost of massive bloat. Now, another person I recommend this to be used by is anyone who wants better browser support or modern updates without leaving Debian's world. Now, I think this distro is less ideal for users who want set it and forget it with minimal tweaking. Also, users who depend on maximum long-term stability where no custom layers 
or acceptable. For instance, mission critical servers. Now also beginners who don't want any use of terminal or manual intervention. And the biggest thing is if you want a system with very low disk space because the snapshots and extra tooling, it will eat it up quickly. And in my day-to-day -day use, Asthma 13 held up well for browsing, dev work, and general production. And that's something I didn't say in the beginning, but I've been trying it out for a while in a virtual machine and playing around with it since I first found out about Asthma. And the snapshot system gives me confidence when experimenting. But when I push custom kernels or non-standard packages, I tried carefully. And so that's my full take on ASME Linux 13 Debian Edition, a bold effort to bring Debian up to speed with polish while preserving control. It's not perfect, but it's a very promising direction for folks who want something better than plain old Debian, but less heavy than bigger distros. Now, if you tried ASME 13 already or one of the earlier ASME Zinc versions, go down and drop a comment and tell me your experience. Let me know the layout you liked, also problems you may have hit or tweaks you may have made to the system. I love to hear what worked for you. In this review, now if this review helped you decide whether to try ASME Review 13 or not, do me a favor, go down and hit that like button, subscribe to keep it techie, and ring the bell so you catch future reviews, tutorials, and guides. Now keep exploring, stay curious, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Yo, what's up y'all? Listen, if you've been sitting there thinking about making a move, let me tell you, tech is where it's at. I don't care where you coming from, whether you've got a degree, a GED, or just pure hustle. There's room for you in this game. You see, tech is more than just keyboards and code. It's solving problems, creating opportunities, and building the future. You already have what it takes because tech doesn't care where you start. It cares where you're willing to go. You can teach yourself Linux, learn Python, break into cybersecurity, or even launch your own app. And the resources are out here for free. And yes, you heard me, free. Now, yeah, it's gonna take effort. You'll have to grind, but think about this. The time is gonna pass anyway. So why not invest it in a skill that'll change your life? I mean, tech doesn't just pay the bills. It opens doors to freedom, stability, and generational wealth. So stop doubting yourself, store small, stay consistent, and keep building. Because this isn't just a career, it's a movement. And guess what? You belong here. So let's get it, because the future is yours to build. Keep it taking.